Okay, what I'm going to do here is um, use the, the Hawk um, harness, total hardness test um, model 5EP or number 145400. I'm going to do three different tests. I'm going to do um, before the water softener, which is, uh, this is on a well, so this is well water tap water I'm going to do and I'm going to do reverse osmosis water. Now what we have here is the little packets. I like the packets because it's always a fresh sample every time so I'm going to need three of those. There's three of those. We also have two tubes. One is, um, I believe this is 10 milliliters. Um, and we have the shaker bottle, call it. And then we have the reagent, or whatever it is. So, first of all, what I don't like when I see online is, and I do have a little bit of experience with this um, on jobs, you really need to clean the bottles, clean the shakers, clean everything. So get it full, um, put your finger halfway over, and just shake it up. Do this three different times. Shake it up nice. That way your sample. Um, that way there's no residue left. Cover it over halfway or so with your finger. Shake it clean. What you're doing is trying to get out any residue from previous tests. Shake it three times. And finally you're going to get it and you're going to fill it right on up. Right? And this is going to be your, your known quantity. Put it right on in there. I probably should have shaken that a little bit more to empty it out, so I'll redo that. I'll shake them clean. Shake them dry, basically. Get my water again. Over the top, down inside. And I'm done with that for now. Now comes the the powder, a little bit of dabbing. It does have a nice little tear section, which I was too high. Has a nice little line. Stay on the line. Don't fight that like I just did. I guess sometimes I get a little nervous but I kind of want to make this thing go fast so open it up like that and just drop it in now you're gonna see this one's hard and it's gonna show pink and obviously that's pink um, then you take the reagent or the titrant, titrant solution there's different names for all this stuff and I'm not all that particular on it. Take the solution. Each drop equals one grain of hardness. One grain of hardness equals, I think it's 17.1 parts per million of hardness. Not that it matters. What have I got in there? Okay. So, what I also see online is people do not shake it. Let's see if I can do this left-handed so you can see it. Um, you really need to shake this up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I already know twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17. I already know that I'm shooting, it's going to be up close to uh, 
38. So that was 17. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Now you should be shaking this after each drop. 25, 26, 27, 28. And you can see we're starting to get a little bit of blue. So technically with the shake, I'm going to call it 28. Um, that's fine by me. Right? So now I know I got 28 grains of hardness in my well water. Here's one thing I do is I make my own little containment system baggy with a paper towel in it. Alright, now I'll do the tap water again three times. Rinse it. The most important thing is rinse it. Rinse it, cover it halfway, and shake. Get as much of the, everything off of there as you can. Pipe it, shake that up, get it nice and rinsed. And fill it up. Good enough. Done with that. Now we go back to the powder again. This should turn blue right off the bat. There's that little line again. That, of course, you don't do this every day, so you kind of forget. Pop it open. Dump it in. They say not to worry about um, the powder in the bottom of here, all of it becoming uh, dissolved, and you can see that's it's blue, but it's uh, close. So I would say I'm using um, just enough salt. I don't want to use too much salt. I don't want to use too little salt. I'd say that's pretty close. It's almost got a little bit of a pink cast to it. And I did adjust my filter. I'm supposed to test this in another four days or four or five days. So I'm kind of surprised it's turning so fast because I didn't think my softener was going to regenerate this early, but it must have already. Anyways, that's got a little bit of a pink cast to it, but it's blue, so um, as long as the... Um, Build up doesn't get all over my fixtures. That's really all I'm looking for. So again, oops. Well, that doesn't matter. Actually, that saves me a little bit of reverse osmosis. In my mind, reverse osmosis water is like gold. It's precious. So before I go to the reverse osmosis, I'll just rinse this out just to make sure I'm ahead of the game and then go to the reverse osmosis. I'm just going to do this one three times. I can tell this is soft because it's pretty slippery in my hand. I really got to hold the bottle otherwise that baby would have been flying. That's my three times. Top it off. Get it in there, make sure you got it. And that's that. We won't be using that anymore. Find my line. Tear it off. Get a little wiggle and a push and a crease if you can. 
Dump around in there. And then you can see there's no question as far as if that's got a uh, pink cast to it. It's, it's strictly blue. So there you go. That's the general gist of the test from three different sources using titration. TDS meters, they're a waste. The TDS meter doesn't know the difference between a salt ion and a calcium ion or a magnesium ion or an iron ion or anything else, aluminum. It, if, as long as it's um, conductive, electri electrically conductive, a TDS meter doesn't care. You're going to get the same reading of salt as you will with um, a hardness mineral. You need to do a titration if you really, really, really want to know how well your water softener is working to keep scale and build up off of your fixtures. Thanks. That's it. Bye.